Oh, hi, achievers. Hi, I'm back with the 23 book for 2023. And first of all, I'm not an expert in The Little Mermaid. I know some people out there, it's their favourite story, their favourite fairy tale, even though it's bleak. Has Christian said had a bit of issues, I do think. So, however, Little Mermaid, the actual original story is um, the titular mermaid, never actually named in the story, gives up her voice um, to be able to walk on land, which causes a lot of pain and discomfort so she could be with her prince. He marries someone else, she gets turned into foam, obviously she doesn't kill him, it's quite a bleak story. And yeah, maybe one day she'll get into heaven. Disney took the story and kind of gave it the Disney fairy tale twist on it, and of course a happy ever after. This is bleak. Now actually, I think that in some ways, Hash Christian Anderson who wrote the original story would be impressed with this, because Hash Christian Anderson kind of liked his bleak endings. This is part of the Disney Twisted Tales, part of your world. Okay, and it's what if Ariel had never defeated Ursula? It's very, very faint writing that. Okay, so set five years after the event of the Little Mermaid with a bit of twist in the tale. Okay, read the blurb. Part of your world. It's been five years since the infamous sea which defeated Little Mermaid, taking King Triton's life in the process. Ariel is now the voiceless queen of Atlantica, while Ursula runs Prince Eric's kingdom on land. But when Elle discovers that her father might be still alive, she finds herself returning to a world and a prince she never imagined she would see again. Will Elle be able to overthrow the murderous villain that started destroying her home and the world she once longed to be a part of? Okay. This book does not make any sense whatsoever. It's by Liz Braswell, by the way, she's the author. Now, I am not an expert in The Little Mermaid, but I felt really, really kind of insulted by a lot of this. Now, um, first of all, um, uh, Ariel for Video De Benson, the original. Yes, we heard the story. Okay, she gave up her, you know, she gave up to get her man. But this is this is how it opens. Okay, now this bit here makes seriously makes no sense. Now you always kind of assume that Eric was an only child with them deceased parents. Yet it opens up with this bit here when the king and queen of Australia, which is the kingdom Eric's from. Decided it was time had come for each of their children to assume the roles and habits of adulthood and more importantly to move out of the main palace Prince Eric quite unsurprisingly chose a small castle on the edge of the sea Eric's parents are still alive Previous to this it starts off with an invasion Trelia is invading the neighbouring countries and it still their lands and resources and people have died in this There's been like a bit of a small civil war going on but the king and queen aren't even mentioned. Do you think, okay, it's the equivalent of Prince, I don't know, let's pick one, Prince Harry turning in the case and say, I'm going to invade France. He can't do that. Only a monarch or, or a government can actually invade other countries. No one can turn around again and say, oh, no, we can do that. That's impossible. It's just, it's just contradictions from the very, very start. This is page 21, okay? Right, and in the meantime, Eric has been under Ursula's spell for the last five years, but he's been conducting poems and plays, okay, operas. And through this, um, Joanne, who is um, Scuttle's granddaughter, she realises, oh my God, King Triton's still alive. King Triton isn't dead. Right, so in the meantime, Eric has been under this spell. Um, Ursula has been running the kingdom, the kind of one neighbouring nations, and Elle's been under the sea, being queen. Now, if you remember, she's the youngest in her musical debut, okay? But she is the queen. Now, it makes zero, zero sense, but it even starts, okay? This is when Ariel now um, is uses sign language um, to get around. I actually do know in the animated series, there was actually a mermaid who did use sign language. So that's not part of the, um, that's not out of the realms of possibility, okay? But this bit here. You are responsible for the murder of our father, they, they had said. It's only right you take on his burdens. Right. Ayo wondered if it was less punishment for her than a relief for them. None, none of us has wanted the job. As royal princesses, they could sing and dance all day, dress up in fancy shells, wear crowns, oversee dancers and parades and balls. They have had to do any real work. Right. Typically, the eldest is always groomed to become, what if Triton died? Okay. The eldest one, I think, was a Tina. Okay. She'll be queen nevertheless, unless she decides to abdicate, but there's several others following behind her. But, no. Okay? Right. So, Ariel receives words, okay, from Skartal that her father might be still alive, so she decides to return to the, return to the, um, return to land. 
And this crucial bit here, okay, what he says to her sisters, okay, what, what she's going to do, what the plan is. I think Father might be still alive. Or through sign language, she can't, still can't speak at this point, okay? Here we go. Right. I don't need your permission, she signed. I was merely letting you know. Well, she said, raising an eyebrow. You made me queen. Yes, I suppose we did. Right. You have five other girls thrown and slipped into the currents of the fins flickering seamlessly into the depths. Martina swooped and followed behind. I really hope you do find him, she called over her shoulder. No one's going to volunteer to come along, Ariel signed. Half ironically, we're back turned. There was no way our sisters could have known she was saying anything. Ariel is queen at this point. She could have ordered them to come with her. Okay? They have to volunteer. They made her queen. She's in charge of this kingdom. She could just turn around, okay, and say, through sign language, clearly, I'm going to find father. You're coming with me. But there's a crucial bit. Ariel has the trident. The thing that Ursha wanted the most, okay, in all the sea, she wanted, because if you have the trident, you are, you control the seas. Ariel has had the trident for the last five years. In that five years, she has no one's considered going back, okay? More of a case of Ursha is on land, okay? Therefore, by checking in, find out what she was doing, she just didn't care. No, it's basically said she didn't care. She didn't, she didn't care, okay, about Eric, because Eric had Vanessa, Okay, she, Ariel let this happen. And this bit here, okay, this is when that she's turning herself back human. She even mentions, okay, her father could have just always done this. This bit here, okay. This bit here. With a few, a few quick leaps, Ariel um, pu pu uh, purposed herself into the much shallow waters. Using all her strength, she forced herself upright so she was standing on her tail. Then she waved a trident and became a human. That was it, that was all. Her father could have done it years ago, long before these, all these terrible things happened. Long before she even met Eric. She could have turned her into a human for a day or several days or let her explore life on land until she tired of it or became scared or lonely and missed life. And once she had met Eric, tried to could have saved her this trouble, still in her voice and her life, then his life, the chance to fall in love with the boy. She would have been able to walk on her own two legs and say things with her own, with her own voice. Okay? Like, I'm the man who saved you. Yep, I know that song because I wrote it. Let me sing it for you. And she could have sung and it could have fallen in love. Oh, you, well, oh, hold on. You actually blame me Triton for your predicament? Yeah, that, that, that she actually turns around again and says, oh, it's so, so easy to get legs with the trident. She has done nothing with that trident for five goddamn years. Ariel comes at a point as a horrible, horrible person. Because what Ursula has been doing to Eric in the guise of Vanessa, is absolutely appalling. She's basically, she's brainwashed him. And there's this bit here, okay, where um, Ariel, Carlotta actually starts to remember, then also later Grimsby, okay, so she's got allies on her side, they actually remember her. As everyone's spell, okay, after five years, is starting to break a little bit more, right? This is when she sneaks into Vanessa's room. Um, um, Ursula, as Vanessa, has a maid called Verite, who becomes also like an ally on this she's like a young a young girl right this is when she's going into the royal palace she sneaked in okay it's a bit here i couldn't even believe it's even written right she zipped it in this was vanessa's room the royal couple was living side by side not together not together Ariel didn't really want to unpack her feelings around this but she couldn't help picking at them by taking a stick and seeing what was in the crevice of their quarrel surely she had had the hope for Eric to stay single after all these years to remain he was in her memory. Surely she couldn't blame him for having any feelings for Vanessa. The witch cast a mighty spell on him. It wouldn't be his fault if she did everything he said, fawned over her, slept in the same room as she. So she couldn't blame him, yeah, because she couldn't blame him, okay, because even though they live side by side in separate bedrooms, that's not unusual for a lot of wars back in the day, okay? There was the king's chamber, the queen's chamber. Um, the fact that Eric, yeah, uh, has been a minus puppet for the last five years, but Ariel can't blame him for that no actually i blame ariel for that oh i absolutely blame ariel for that right and ariel is so absolutely dramatic in this it's shocking okay i just bit here just so it's my leg right this is when after she gets um a voice okay um that so this is when i guess you heard first hears a voice coming out of um Osha's mouth as vanessa okay it's bit here this is when I think he was affecting on her voice. 
Should have heard her own voice in years. The day when Ursula first took her payment, it felt like air was very softly sucked out of her body. The young silly mouth thinks she was, hadn't even realised it. Like a ghost, she went on with her quest. Her desires intent on her prize. Not even realising it was, all, it was already dead. She was already dead to the world. So maybe it wasn't quite that dramatic. Queen Eyre corrected herself gently. Right. By seeing Vanessa wed Eric and her father killed and realising she would never get her either her man or her voice back. A part of her truly died that day. And now that witch was using her voice to sing in the bath. Yeah. So, but... Ariel gets the totem back, the little seashell that was around Vanessa's neck. She smashes it, she gets her voice. Great, she has a voice. She has a voice, she has a trident. She can actually do something at this point. But no, it keeps going on, okay, about the politics and the... of the land and the neighbouring kingdoms. And it, this could have been a lot, lot shorter, okay? And Ariel really... She, she doesn't care about Eric. When her and Eric do finally meet up again, Okay, finally meet up again. This bit here is when Eric thinks he's back to her to break the curse, okay, for his veil to come down, okay? Because now he's remembering everything. He's remembering the he's been a minor's puppet pretty much for the last five years. And the king and queen, by the way, who actually do rule the kingdom itself, they were not even seen in this, incidentally. Right. I came back for my father, she made herself say. The queen of the sea had a little difficulty with stating the truth out loud. Younger Eyre would have started. I would see word he might be still alive as a prisoner of Ursula. Oh, Eric Blink, your father, of course. That's the main reason I have returned. We had thought he was dead all these years. I'm here to rescue him. I just thought, I mean, I'd hoped you came back to take me away from all this. To go live happily ever after with you somewhere, under the sea maybe. But you would drown under the sea. I'm drowning up here. I've been drowning for, for, drowning for years, underwater it felt like. Now waking up, of course. It makes sense that you would come and end it. Right, but no, she never came back for him, she only came back for her father. She, she allowed this to happen, okay? Eric has been mentally tortured for five years, incidentally, but Ariel doesn't care, okay? But eventually, with Eric's spell being broken, knowing the truth, he has it out with Ursula, okay? She's speaking with her um, Pat O'Carroll voice. Pat O'Carroll was the um, voice of Ursula and the Little Mermaid, and uh, she also was a voice of Morgana in the sequel as well. Uh, which wasn't that great, but I love Ursula. She was fantastic. And um, she actually has it out. Why are you here? In the original Little Mermaid, all Ursula wanted was to rule the oceans, as that was her motivation. But now she's on land, it doesn't make sense. And of course, everyone had to try it, and she could have just sorted this out a long time ago, but she just didn't care. Right, this bit here. <clears throat> right. Eric actually has it out of it, like a big row over dinner. Right, why, but why, why are you here? If you don't even like me, what is there keeping you here? You're not even doing the magic anymore, are you? How do you conjure any spells, do any magic since we've been together, since the initial one you cast over me and my kingdom? Yeah. Right. The reason why is if the only spell Ursha has ever cast, okay, is the one when she hypnotised the land, also, when did she have time to hypnotise everyone? She hypnotised Eric, and then she hypnotised um, the entire kingdom. But when did she even have the time? I mean, she really planned ahead with this. She even turned Fossum and Jessam into humans. Yes, they're humans, they're her guards walking around this. Honestly, did she see foresee everything? I mean, hey, she, she planned, okay? Let's put here. This is Ursula's point of view, okay? Of course the spells didn't work on land, idiot, she was a sea witch. The catnip she had cast over the Prince of Maine because she had begun it in the sea, hurt the one for her new body. So to the mass hypnosis she had blown across the seeping land, seeping seasons of the land like an ill fog. It had been created while she was in the ocean. Fossum and Jetson were transformed while they were still in the shallows. Right. And there's one bit as well where a young girl called Julia is goes down with the beach with Ursula because... Um, Ursula wants to essentially steal her voice, goes down to the ocean and Julia just throws a lantern and runs away. So she's like, Ursula's like, oh, I can make you a queen, I can make you a princess, whatever, I can make you adored. And Julia just runs away. I thought Ursula was quite nice, but she's like, screw this, I'm out of here. Okay. So, however, due to the, Eric's realising that his kingdom has been invading the Naven ones, okay. 
there's this one ridiculous bit as well now i appreciate it for kind of projects of the land however the fact this is how if eric and ursula get a divorce they start talking about divorcing okay what would it mean for ursula okay let's put here all right speaking of wires i should also add there are other nice little clauses in the typical royal contracts ancient stuff like what happens if you fail to produce a male heir most of it will be dismissed from court today but even in a modern era of astronomy and steam engines well i'm afraid to read it is still a bit backwards anything you own is technically mine any heaviness you receive is mine any property you manage is mine any decision involving purchase of transfers of goods scoring of children find domestic help is all ultimately mine okay you see he added almost apologetically you immortal creatures have your powers your promises your wish fulfillments and your context it's true but we humans have lawyers what she's a goddamn sea witch and she's been threatened with lawyers yeah because it turns transpires that all the um machinery all the kind of weapons that Ursula's building she's going to take them out to the ocean and bomb antarctica so atlantica sorry she's going to bomb atlantica and now Ursula has to stop them through the magic of this musical okay this opera which um eric is writing which is going to reveal the truth and it this search they have for triton who's been a polyp for all this time he's been around he's Ursula has him always had him in the meantime Ursula has been killing people declaring civil war and um amassing weapons and but that's it's okay it's okay because ariel didn't care everything in this could have been avoided because ariel has the goddamn trident but she never thought to wield it to you know get her father back right oh no this book i already spoiled the ending for you okay it ends Oh, it ends with basically Triton back. Ariel's gonna go up to this land and be like an ambassador between the sea and the shore. And I just found it absolutely ridiculous. Okay. It's ridiculous, it's insulting. And there's one bit where Ursha, sorry, Ariel says, Oh my cod. Cod instead of oh my god. And one little bit as well I notice is where Ariel's talking, okay, about being immortal and being uh, being a mermaid and everything else. When she mentions her mother passed away when her mother was 100, but Ariel's only 16. In the original story, she'd be 22 in this. That doesn't make sense either. So, anyway, part of your world, a twisted tale. What if Ariel had never defeated Ursula? Well, we know, and it's not particularly that good. Okay? Anyway, I sign off here. Uh, 23 books to 2023. Bye now.